Marcus. Today I'm going to be talking to you about biology, specifically how to get a 7 in biology in the IB diploma. So IB biology is known to be one of the harder subjects just because you have to know so much. Another reason why it's considered to be one of the harder subjects is that people don't typically get that good grades in it. And there is a big reason for this apart from the huge subject matter, which is the test structure where yes, you have some multiple choice questions in paper one. However, paper two is made up of a lot of difficult short answer questions, as well as a lot of data analysis, which is where most people lose a huge chunk of their mark. And then there's the long answer questions, which are basically just short essays, which are quite easy. Data analysis is the vital part to get right if you need to get that seven, because it is where people lose the most marks and it is what distinguishes a five and a six from that level seven. So let's get into it. My first tip is about the data analysis, which is to look at the keywords. These are similar to the ones which I mentioned in my chemistry video, which you can check in the link in the description and up here, where you have to look at the words at the beginning of the questions, such as describe, explain, evaluate, and use these words to make sure that you are answering the question. It's imperative that you look at these because if you don't take these into account and if you don't describe something, when it asks you to describe, then you just won't get the mark. The examiner will be looking for you to do these specific things, such as when it asks you to compare, you have to compare two pieces of data or two ideas and you say something is like this, whereas something else is like this. And if you really show the examiner that you are looking at these keywords, then the examiner is much more likely to give you the marks that you deserve, even if you are just saying very basic things in the data analysis. So my second tip is also about the data analysis my tip is to refer to the figures. Often just listing off the different numbers that are present in the data they give you and saying that set 1 has an average of 53 and set 2 has an average of 79 will very often get you the marks because that kind of thing is very common in the mark scheme and people often just don't put that sort of thing because they just don't think of it as it's so simple. It's a super effective way to gain easy marks and it is where lots of people lose marks without so my third tip is about the long answer questions of 4 marks, 6 marks and 8 marks, which is to use the diagrams. When there's large concepts or processes such as the Krebs cycle which you need to memorize, there's no point in just trying to memorize each different individual fact about these concepts without some sort of aid. And here I would suggest drawing something out when you are answering these questions to help you then write the paragraph. You might not even get any marks for drawing the diagram but just having it there to help you with your memory and to help you write that thing in a very structured way as well as get those two bonus English marks which you get in those long answer questions. So my fourth tip is about the biology IA which is to keep it simple. The biology IA is not like the chemistry IA. You don't need to come up with something which no one has ever done before because if you do find something that no one has ever done before it's likely that you won't even be allowed to do it because there's so many limitations in terms of living organisms that you can work with in biology. So I would suggest keeping it simple and finding something that you can relate back to your topics and create a good explanation for. Then you can focus on creating a well-designed experiment which you can then analyze and evaluate the data and make sure that you have the whole writing up process really perfect rather than the idea because that's where you're going to get the marks in biology and the idea itself isn't all that important. So keeping it simple is really vital so that you don't go off and ramble and you keep it concise and related to topics that you've learned so you get those extra marks for analysis. So my fifth tip is about general studying which is to use BioNinja. So if you don't know BioNinja it's a sort of resource which summarizes all of the different topics in a very effective format and it also has other resources such as summary PDFs for all of the different subtopics as well as class slides which you can go through and use if your teachers aren't really that good. The link to BioNinja is in the description and please check it out. It is amazing for studying biology. BioNinja is honestly the best resource out there for studying biology and I use it all the time for studying. I cannot stress this enough. If you are doing biology, you have to use BioNinja. So tip six is when you don't really have much time to study for tests, since there's such a large content that you need to know and sometimes there just isn't much time. Ideally, I would suggest that you use the UMPR technique that I outline in this video where I go over exactly how to study for tests in the most effective way and how I study for tests because this really gives you the understanding as well as the memorization and practice parts you need to succeed in biology. 
However, this is kind of consuming and sometimes you can't really go through all of the steps. So for that reason, if you are short on time for Vital, I would say focus on the big picture and on the big ticket items, such as the long answer questions. Because in a test, the long answer questions might be worth 20 marks, whereas the multiple choice are only worth 10 marks. And if you focus on knowing the concepts and knowing the processes, then you are able to get those long answer questions really down and really push up your grades just because you get those right. Additionally, knowing these large concepts allows you to answer the short answer questions pretty effectively, as well as some multiple choice questions where it might just be recall and this might be related to the big concepts that you've learned. There may be small lapses in your memory and in your knowledge, which can be found in the multiple choice questions, such as the labeling of a certain part of a chloroplast, which you might not know because you just didn't have the time to study it. And this is fine, because if you do understand the big concepts, then you understand that with photosynthesis, the different steps occur in different parts of the chloroplast and you know what these are called then you will be able to infer and if you really don't know then you can just guess and you have some chance of getting it right. Ultimately if you lose a couple of marks in the multiple choice questions it's not the end of the world because you do have much more valuable questions later on in the tests. So for that reason managing your time and making sure that you know the large concepts that will come out in the long answer questions is far more effective and a far better use of your time than memorizing everything and trying to get your knowledge perfect but only covering a short section of the subject. So my final tip is to rely on long-term memorization and knowledge rather than cramming because biology is a very large subject and once you get to the exams it's going to be really tough to keep everything in there in your short-term memory because you can't cram a whole biology syllabus. Instead make use of your tests to do spaced repetition which uses multiple reminders of the information over increasingly longer time lapses in order to really commit it to your long-term memory. How I would suggest doing this is by doing recaps of different topics over certain periods of time. So if you have a test on topic 2 on February 12th, then you study for the test and do the test and then you schedule a revisit to that topic a few weeks later where you will go over that topic and remind yourself of everything that's in it and maybe do some practice questions just to make sure that you have everything in your memory. Then you schedule it for a couple of months later where you go over that topic again and you make sure that you know everything. And then you do it for a few months after that until you get to the exam where you have already covered that topic five or six times previously and you know everything in your long-term memory so that once you get to studying for the exam it's far easier and you find that you don't really need to cram because you already sort of know most of it inherently. I hope you found some value in this video and if you did, please consider subscribing and hitting a thumbs up in this video. It is free and it really does help me out. That's all from me and I'll see you next time. There's no stopping it now, there's no facing the heat. Can't fight it or drive it now, I'm down on my knees.